This is Exodus 8 and verse 16. <clears throat> and Yahweh said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it might become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man, and in beasts. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the, magi and the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there was lice upon man and upon beasts. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of Yahweh. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he hearkened not unto them as Yahweh had said. All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten son, who is the savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect. Within the nation of Israel, and Israel consists of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the whole for the elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa. Coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit. Harakakwadash. And I wanted to read that Exodus 8, 16 through 19, because it went into the plagues, one of the plagues that the Lord was bringing upon Egypt. And the plague was uh, so miraculous, so to speak, that it couldn't be fabricated by the magicians to the point to where they had to acknowledge that nah, that this is the higher power. This is the finger of Yahweh. All right, that had done this. And that's how it's going to be here. With the judgment that the Lord brings upon this place, it's going to be evident, all right, clear and evident that this is a higher power and that this is judgment from Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, so I want to go into some precepts. Um, This is really inspired off of a uh, class this past Friday. And we were reading the book of Wisdom of Solomon. And um, we read about how the Lord was raining down hail mingled with fire upon um, upon uh, Egypt. And as the scripture says, let me grab this first. Second Ezra chapter uh, 15. All right. The Lord is going to do even greater, mightier works in this time period. All right. This is second Ezra chapter 15 and verse uh 10, it says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Right now, this is speak this isn't speaking of ancient Egypt. This is speaking of a modern day Egypt. All right. By this time that Ezra is speaking, okay, or that uh um that this was uh yeah, I think this was the angel or angel or the Lord speaking to Ezra, but when this was uh spoken about, Egypt had already went through its plagues, had already been destroyed, and so on and so forth. So this is talking about a modern day Egypt. All right, let me keep reading. Salaki, I'm jumping the gun. But second Ezra chapter 15 and um, verse 11, it says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Right. So it says that the Lord is going to smite Egypt with plagues as before. And once again, this isn't speaking of ancient Egypt. This is speaking of modern day Egypt. All right. This is the book of Revelation chapter 11. In verse uh, 11, or Salaki, verse um, 11, right, Revelation 11 and 8, it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So there's a place that's known as a spiritual Egypt, spiritual Sodom, Right? This is speaking of America. It says that their dead lie, bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. In the book of Proverbs, it says, He that uh, departeth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So this is speaking of our people being in this dead estate. Or we fell away from the way of understanding. We were discontinued from our heritage. In the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter says, The uh, the law, statutes, and commandments that were given unto us were our understanding in the sight of of all the nations, but what? We fell away from that, from knowing our heritage and knowing how we're supposed to conduct ourselves according to the Holy Scriptures, according to Yahweh Shai. All right. 
So we fell away from that, man. But I just want to bring this up, the precept, the point, to bring out the point that this is a, a modern day Egypt, okay? The same Egypt that is being spoken about in the second verse of the 15th chapter, that the Lord is going to smite with plagues as the Lord smote ancient Egypt with plagues. And like I mentioned, it's going to be way greater in this time period uh, than it was back then, all right? This is the book of, uh, I'm going to hit Sirach first. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and hit this in Jeremiah. All right, this is Jeremiah chapter 16. And 14, it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, the Lord Yahweh liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Right, so everybody knows about the Exodus, all right, about the Israelites being delivered out of ancient Egypt, the Lord smiting it with plagues. All right, the fear of the Lord was brought upon all the nations through the judgment that the Lord brought upon that place. The people began, began to fear us, fear Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, and the Israelites because of how the Lord jacked up those Egyptians and the great wonders that he brought upon that place, man, was going to be the same thing in this time period. It says, but the Lord, reading 14 again, Jeremiah 16 and 14, therefore behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, the Lord Yahweh liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord Yahweh liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, right? This is speaking of here in America. Right. It says, uh, and from all the lands where uh, whither he had driven them and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So what the Lord is going to do here unto this place is going to overpass what the Lord did in Egypt. OK, it's going to surpass that to where ancient Egypt isn't even going to be spoken about. It's going to be talked about as far as how the Lord delivered us out of here in Babylon, the land of the north and all the other lands where we've been scattered, man. That's going to be the new talk, okay? Through the mass judgment that the Lord is going to bring upon this place. I'm going to bring out one more precept and then go into wisdom of Solomon. All right, this is the book of uh, Sirach, chapter 36, and verse 1. It says, Have mercy upon us, O Yahweh, power of all, and behold us, and send thy fear upon all. Uh, Salakia. Sometimes this app would be be tripping. So I'm going to read this out of my, uh, uh, out of my scriptures here. So this is a uh, Sirach 36 and verse two, it says, and send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee, lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power. So we're in the time where the Lord is going to allow the world to see his power. All right. And the book of wisdom of Solomon as well, it says, when men will not believe that thou art of a full power, thy, uh, thou showest thy strength. And among them that know it, he maketh their boldness manifest, right? So the Lord is in the time, we're in the time where the Lord is about to reveal his might and his strength and show forth that he is the true power that truly ruleth in the kingdom of men, right? So it says, and that was sanctified, verse, uh, verse three, again, lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power as thou was sanctified in us before them. So be thou magnified among them before us. And let them know thee as we have known thee, that there is no power but only thou, O Yahweh. Show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Right? So the Lord is going to show new signs and strange num uh, strange uh, wonders, man. All right? It's writ that's written as well in the book of, uh, what's that, Isaiah uh, 28. Let me see. This is Isaiah 28 and 21. For the Lord Yahweh shall rise up as a Mount Perizim. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. Right? So the Lord is going to be doing new signs and strange wonders that this world has not seen. All right? To where it's going to be evident, once again, that it is truly judgment coming from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. It won't be attributed to Esau and his witchcraft or his technology or this and then the third like oh maybe it's the maybe it's the uh uh what do they call uh maybe this is a project blue beam or maybe this is that or this or whatever the case may be or whatever um i forget what he uses to manipulate the weather all right things are going to get so bad and so severe and so strange and wonderful all right to where people are going to be like no this is the finger of the of the heavenly father this is judgment 
from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shad. This isn't man's doing, all right? Even though there's advancements in technology and knowledge is, it has increased, it's going to get so uh, crazy out here with the judgment of the Lord that he's going to bring forth, that is going to be clear. Now, nah, this is the heavenly father, all right? This is the power that those Israelites were talking about, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shad, man, that's doing these things, all right? The scripture says, and I'm going to grab it later, Lord's will, but the Lord is known in his judgment. Just like the Lord was made famous, Yahweh was made famous through the judgment that he brought upon uh, ancient Egypt. It's going to be the same thing in this time period, all right? So this is the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16. <clears throat> Wisdom of Solomon 16 and verse 16. It says, for the ungodly that deny to know thee were scourged by the strength of thine arm with strange rains, hails and showers were they persecuted that they could not avoid and through fire were they consumed. Now, this is speaking about the Lord raining down hail and uh, mingle with fire upon ancient Egypt. This is one of the plagues that the Lord brought upon ancient Egypt. This is the book of Exodus. Let's read that real quick. Chapter 9 and verse 22. It says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven. And Yahweh sent thunder. Oh, Salakia. It says, and Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven and the Lord Yahweh sent thunder and hail and fire and fire ran along upon the ground and Yahweh rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with hail, very grievous, such, a such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. So imagine that. All right. It said not only hail, but grievous hail. All right, so imagine big chunks of ice, all right, uh, a hailstorm, but huge, man, okay? Not only is it ice, but it's a flaming ball of ice, man, ice on fire being rained down from the heavens. This was a strange wonder that the Lord brought upon ancient Egypt, man, all right? They knew this was from the Heavenly Father, right? So let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 and 17, it says, For which is most to be wondered at, the fire had more force in the water that quencheth all things, for the world fighteth for the righteous. So imagine that. All right, Egyptians, they're seeing this hail being rained down and then fire, all right, uh, 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 pieces of uh, ice on fire uh, breaking against the ground and being shot here and there, you know, all over the place. And then they throw in water on the fire and then the fire only ignites more as if it's gasoline, man. This is what the Lord was doing to show forth like, no, this is my judgment. I'm doing this. You can't escape this. This is my power. The Lord allowed the people uh, uh, of the land of Egypt and the other nations to hear the reputation of it. But he allowed them to see his power, man. All right. It says, uh, verse 18, for some time the flame was mitigated that it might not burn up the beasts that were sent against the ungodly. So picture this in your mind all right so a hailstorm uh shatters the ice raining down on the ground shattering fire being flown everywhere man all right and now the scriptures talk about in the midst of all this the lord still had spirits that are created for vengeance right it says uh scorpions and teeth the wild beasts all right the scriptures talk about how the lord has the beast of the earth uh, to devour and to destroy. It mentions that in Jeremiah, the 15th chapter. The point being is that the Lord will use, put spirits on animals to cast forth his judgment. So in the midst of this hail, this grievous hailstorm, Egyptians running everywhere, right? And all that going down, you had, uh, you had beasts that the Lord was sending forth in the midst of all that. So you had Egyptians running everywhere. All right, imagine uh, uh, an Egyptian running all right, trying to escape the, the fire and the ice, right? The hell. And then uh, he runs by a, a wild bear, all right, or a lion, okay? He sees the lion. He's startled. He's running away, okay? And then some flames, all right? You know, like when an animal sees fire, they'll try and, they'll try and uh, come back, you know? Or they'll stop from going forward because the fire is in front of them because of that fear of it. 
So here it is. This uh, Egyptian, just putting it in perspective, let's say that he escapes the bear. All right. And then uh, it's a fire that's surrounding him or in front of him. All right. He's crawling back. He's taking a deep breath. He's like, whew. All right. I escaped. All right. The fire is stopping the, the, the bear from coming through. But then the Lord would mitigate the fire, meaning that he would lessen it down, decrease it just for the lion or the bear to come through, to come past, to judge that Egyptian, to judge that individual. Now, with them seeing that, they were like, you could only imagine. They were like, what the hell is going on? They can't escape. That's why in the book of Jeremiah 11, 11, it says the Lord will bring an evil upon you, which you shall not be able to escape. So that's how the Lord was bringing that judgment upon them and them seeing that might and that power, because that's not how fire works. All right. All right. <laughs> that's not how uh, uh, the elements actually work, you know, but with them seeing that they, they acknowledge like, no, this is truly judgment from the heavenly father. There's no way in hell that this is just happening as a coincidence, man. And that's going to be the same thing with the judgments that the Lord brings upon this place for him to be exalted. For Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai to be exalted, all right? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 and verse 18. For some time the flame was mitigated that it might not burn up the beasts that were sent against the ungodly, but themselves might see and perceive that they were persecuted with the judgment of, of the Most High. So they would know. They're like, oh, shit, no, nah, this is judgment from the Lord. I can't escape this. I can't run. I got away from the line, all right? The fire stopped him from coming through, and then the fire lessened, all right, just for the, the line to come through and jack me up, man. It was evident, all right? But to continue on, it says, uh, verse 19, and at another time it burneth even in the midst of water above the power of fire that it might destroy the fruits of the unjust land. So imagine that. Imagine you you in your crib and you got a, a, a vineyard, right? But between you and the vineyard, it's a little river or a stream or a lake or something or whatever the case may be, a stream. All right, you, you got a bridge over it so you can walk by and then take care of it and everything like that. But the Lord had it to where... Let's say that the fire goes uh, goes by the water. Instead of the fire just stopping by the water, the fire would would run over the water, all right, and, and get to your vineyard just to destroy your crops, man. This is what the Lord was doing. Imagine what they were thinking. How the hell is this fire uh, 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 scaling across the water, all right? And it's, it's, it's as if I'm just imagining if I, if you were there, you know, they would be looking at it's as if the the fire is being guided to my to my uh, vineyard. All right. I had the water about it. It was straight. It, was, it wasn't going to be harmed or anything like that. But here it is. The fire is still going over the waters, man. OK, <laughs> this is what the Lord was doing then. man. These are strange wonders. All right. These are new signs. It's going to be new signs in this place, man. It says. Uh, <clears throat> verse 20, instead, whereof thou fedest thine own people with angels food and didst send them from heaven bread prepared without their labor able to content every man's delight and agreeing to every taste talking about the manna that the lord fed us with in the wilderness all right it was to everybody's taste man so nobody in nobody could say like man i'm tired of this man it don't taste good and this and that and the third jake shouldn't have had no excuse to be complaining because it was it was tailored to every man's taste to your appetite all right it says uh Verse 21, for thy sustenance declared thy sweetness unto thy children and serving to the appetite of the either of the eater tempered itself to every man's liking. Right. So, hey, whatever you like. All right. That's that's what that manna was. OK, it tasted good for you. All right. It says verse 22, but snow and ice endured the fire and melted not. That's that hail mingled with fire that they might know that fire burning in the hail and sparkling in the rain did destroy the fruits of the enemies. But this again did even forget his own strength that the righteous might be nourished, right? So it's like as if the fire forgot his strength. Like the fire is supposed to melt the ice, obviously, but it didn't do that, all right? This lets you know that the Lord is in control of all the elements, man. He's in control of everything. Just like when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the midst of the fiery furnace, it said that the fire was like a, 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 a whistling wind, Okay, like a cool breeze, man. The Lord took away the strength of the fire to uh, to uh, to burn them. All right. To make them hot. The Lord was in control of that, man. You know, so this lets you know, no matter what situation we're in, man, the Lord is in control. All right. It says uh, verse 24 for the creature that serveth thee, who art the maker, increaseth his strength against the unrighteous for their punishment and abateth his strength for the benefit of such as put their trust in thee. It says, uh, and that's really, that's really all I'll get on that.
Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I'll get on that, man. Uh, right. But this shows you how 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 crazy <laughs> and how marvelous that judgment was upon Egypt. And like I had mentioned, it's going to be the same thing in this time period, man. Great wonders, strange acts, unexplainable things. And, you know, Esau, he tries to act like he's the smartest nigga on the planet, like he's smarter than the most high. All right, he brings out his scientists. Well, this is happening because of this and that, and it correlates with this, and because the sun is here, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right, man. All right? Your scientists ain't going to be able to explain, or your magicians are right, ain't going to be able to explain why these things are happening, man. It's going to be evident. This is the finger of the most high. That's it. We can't explain this, man. You know? All right, I'm going to end it off with this in the book of Psalms, chapter 9 and verse 6. Or excuse me, 16. It says, uh, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higayuan Salah. So that's it. So the Lord is known by his judgment. And he's going to make himself known by the judgment that he brings upon this place, man. All right. So having that being said, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say shalom.